ammunition is propellant and projectile, or broadly anything that can be used in combat including bombs, missiles, warheads, landmines, naval mines, and anti-personnel mines. The word comes from the French la munition which is all material used for war. The collective term for all types of ammunition is munitions. The purpose of ammunition is to project force against a selected target. However, the nature of ammunition use also includes delivery or combat supporting munitions such as pyrotechnic or incendiary compounds. Since the design of the cartridge, the meaning has been transferred to the assembly of a projectile and its propellant in a single package. Ammunition involves the application of fire to targets, general use of weapons by personnel, explosives and propellants, cartridge systems, high explosive projectiles, warheads, shaped charge forms of attack on armor and aircraft carrier projectiles, fuses, mortar ammunition, small arms ammunition, grenades, mines, pyrotechnics, improved conventional munitions, and terminally guided munition. Glossary. A round is a term synonymous with a single cartridge containing a projectile, propellant, primer and casing. Large caliber cannon often fire explosive filled projectiles known as shells. Non explosive projectiles may be used for practice. Large numbers of small projectiles intended to be fired all at once in a single discharge are also called shot. Handheld guns designed for this type of ammunition are generally known as shotguns. Duds are fully loaded ordnance that fail to function as intended. A cartridge that fails to fire in the weapon is known as a misfire. A partially functioning round is named a hangfire. Dud ammunition, unexploded ordnance, is regarded as highly dangerous, and most safety officials inform civilians to report finding of any large bore duds to the local police or military. Dumb dumb rounds were early attempts to cause contact initiated expansion. Many were lead nose bullets with X marks cut across the nose. A bomb, or more specifically a guided or unguided bomb, typically refers to airdrops, unpowered explosive weapons. Mines, warheads used in guided missiles and rockets are also referred to as bomb type ammunition. Historical these general conditions apply to the storage of ammunition in fortresses. Here the positions for the magazine and ammunition stores are so chosen as to afford the best means of protection from an enemy's fire. Huge earth parapets cover these buildings, which are further strengthened, where possible, by traverses protecting the entrances. For the purpose of filling, emptying, and examining cannon cartridges and shell, a laboratory is generally provided at some distance from the magazine. The interior walls of a magazine are lined, and the floors laid so that there may be no exposed iron or steel. At the entrance, there is a lobby or barrier, inside which persons about to enter the magazine change their clothes for a special suit, and their boots for a pair made without nails. In an ammunition or shell store these precautions need not be taken except where the shell store and the adjacent cartridge store have a common entrance. Persons entering may do so in their ordinary clothes. A large work may have a main magazine and several subsidiary magazines, from which the stock of cartridges is renewed in the cartridge stores attached to each group of guns or in the expense cartridge stores and cartridge recesses. The same applies to main ammunition stores which supply the shell stores, expense stores, and recesses. The supply of ammunition are either for guns forming the movable armament or for guns placed in permanent positions. The movable armament will consist of guns and howitzers of small and medium caliber, and it is necessary to arrange suitable expense cartridge stores and shell stores close to the available positions. They can generally be constructed to form part of the permanent work in the projected face of traverses or other strong formations, and should be arranged for a 24-hour supply of ammunition. These stores are refilled from the main magazine every night under cover of darkness. Light railways join the various positions. The guns mounted in permanent emplacements are divided into groups of two or three guns each and usually each group will require but one caliber of ammunition. 
a cartridge store, shell store and a general store, all well ventilated, are arranged for the especial service of such a group of guns. In the cartridge store the cylinders containing the cartridges are so placed and labeled that the required charge, whether reduced or full, can be immediately selected. In the shell store, the common shell are separated from the armor piercing or shrapnel. Each nature of projectile is painted in a distinctive manner to render identification easy. The fuses and tubes are placed in the general store with the tools and accessories belonging to the guns. The gun group is distinguished by some letter and the guns of the group by numerals, thus A, 1 is number 1 gun of group A. The magazine and shell stores are also indicated by the group letter, and so that mistakes, even by those unaccustomed to the fort, may be avoided. The passages are pointed out by finger posts and direction boards. For the immediate service of each gun, a few cartridges and projectiles are stored in small receptacles built in the parapet as near the gun position as practicable. In some cases, a limited number of projectiles may be placed close underneath the parapet if this is conveniently situated near the breech of the gun and not exposed to hostile fire. In order to supply the ammunition sufficiently rapidly for the efficient service of modern guns, hydraulic, electric, or hand power, hoists are employed to raise the cartridges and shell from the cartridge store and shell store to the gun floor, whence they are transferred to a derrick core loading tray attached to the mounting for loading the gun. Projectiles for BL guns above 6-inch caliber are stored in shell stores ready filled and fused standing on their bases except shrapnel and hay explosive shell, which are fused only when about to be used. Smaller sizes of shells are laid on their sides in layers, each layer pointing in the opposite direction to the one below to prevent injury to the driving bands. Cartridges are stored in brass corrugated cases or in zinc cylinders. The corrugated cases are stacked in layers in the magazine with the mouth of the case towards the passage between the stacks so that it can be opened and the cartridge is removed and transferred to a leather case when required for transport to the gun. Cylinders are stacked, when possible, vertically one above the other. The charges are sent to the gun in these cylinders, and provision is made for the rapid removal of the empty cylinders. The number and nature of rounds allotted to any fortress depends on questions of policy and location. The degrees of resistance the nature of the works and personnel could reasonably be expected to give, and finally on the nature of the armament. That is to say, for guns of large caliber 300 to 400 rounds per gun might be sufficient, while for light QF guns it might amount to 1,000 or more rounds per gun. Modern era modern ammunition includes not only shells for tube artillery and mortars, but increasingly aircraft delivered bombs, smart bombs, rockets and other explosive bearing projectiles. The destructive power and lethality of these systems may be difficult to appreciate, but forces in the fight see the accuracy as just another survival tool against the enemy. A single cluster bomb, deliverable by any of the above systems, can sow softball-sized bomblets across a 100-yard American football-sized field in sufficient density to kill any personnel, even penetrating sandbag trenches and body armor. Operation Desert Storm saw widespread usage of cluster bombs, the Iraqi forces called them steel rain. There is little doubt that their usage is also seen as a psychological tool. The aforementioned bomblets are armed upon dispersal by the spinning action which is hastened by a design resembling softball with small wings. Design The design of the ammunition is determined by its purpose. Anti-personnel ammunition is often designed to break up or tumble inside the target. In order to maximize the damage done, anti-personnel shells contain shrapnel and are designed to explode in mid-air, so its fragments will spread over a large area. Armor-piercing ammunition tends to be hard, sharp, and narrow, often with lubrication. Incendiary projectiles include a material such as white phosphorus which burns fiercely. 
tracer ammunition emits light as it travels, allowing the gunner to see the path of bullets in flight while using a machine gun. Popular types of military rifle and machine gun ammunition include the 5.45 mm, 5.56 mm, and 7.62 mm. Main battle tanks use KA penetrators to combat other MBTs and armored fighting vehicles, and he frag for soft targets such as infantry. Components The components of ammunition intended for rifles and munitions may be divided into these categories, explosive materials and propellants, projectiles of all kinds, cartridges. Fuses, the term fuse, is used by English speakers to denote detonators for explosives, differentiating it from fuses, which are either circuit breakers or a means of transmitting fire. Common artillery fuses include point detonating, delay, time, and proximity. Point detonating fuses detonate upon contact with the target. Delay fuses are designed to penetrate a target before detonating. Time fuses, as the name implies, detonate a certain time after being fired in order to achieve a burst at a specific time after being fired. Proximity fuses contain a radio transceiver activated after firing to detonate the projectile when the signal reflected from the ground reaches a certain strength, e.g., 7 meters above the ground. Fuses are usually armed by the acceleration of the projectile imparted by firing and usually arm several meters after clearing the bore of the weapon. Storage See ammunition dump and magazine for discussion of modern ammunition storage facilities. For firearms, ammunition for infantry refers to the ammunition carried by a typical foot soldier. Someone serving in the infantry generally carries, in pouches, bandoliers, etc., 100 rounds of small arms ammunition, and it is usual to supplement this, when an action is imminent, from the regimental reserve. Every reduction in the caliber of the rifle's ammunition means an increase in the number of rounds carried. 100 rounds of the Martini Henry ammunition weighed 10 pounds 10 ounces, the same weight gives 150. 55 rounds of 0.303 in ammunition and at 0.256 in the number of rounds is still greater. The regimental reserves were historically carried in 6 SAA carts and on 8 pack animals. The 6 carts are distributed, 1 is reserved to the machine guns, 3 is reserved to the battalion itself, and 2 is part of the brigade reserve, which consists therefore of 8 carts. The brigade reserve communicates directly with the brigade ammunition columns of the artillery. The eight pack animals follow the eight companies of their battalion. These, with two out of the three battalion carts, endeavor to keep close to the firing line, the remaining cart being with the reserve companies. Men also are employed as carriers, and this duty is so onerous that picked men only are detailed. Gallantry displayed in bringing up ammunition is considered indeed to justify special rewards. The amount of SAA in regimental charge is 100 rounds in the possession of each soldier, 2,000 to 2,200 on each pack animal, and 16,000 to 17,600 in each of four carts with, in addition, about 4,000 rounds with the machine gun and 16,000 more in the fifth cart. Currently, every army of an internationally recognized country has adopted assault rifles as the main infantry weapon. In Western forces, the 7.62 times 51 mm NATO round has been mostly replaced by the lighter 5.56 times 45 mm NATO round, which is better suited for automatic fire than the larger round and allows each soldier to carry more ammunition. The larger caliber ammunition is still retained where range and weight of shot is important, e.g., machine guns and sniper rifles. Other nations
Especially forces with former ties to the Soviet Union tend to use rifles related to or developed from the AK-47 with similar size rounds to the NATO ones. In 7.62 times 39 mm and 5.45 times 39 mm for assault rifles and 7.62 times 54 mm for sniper rifles and light machine guns. Ordnance Artillery ordnance ammunition is classified in three types, fixed, semi-fixed and separate loading. Fixed and semi-fixed ammunition appear in the form of a projectile mated with a cartridge case which contains the propellant and they resemble small arms rounds. The difference between fixed and semi-fixed ammunition is that the latter allows the propellant charge to be adjusted. The canister is outfitted with a primer on its base which fires upon contact from the firing pin. Gunpowder, precision machine to burn evenly, is contained inside of cloth bags that are numbered. U.S. NATO 105mm howitzers use semi-fixed ammunition, containing seven powder bags referred to as increments or charges. Putting the powder in bags allows the howitzer crew to remove the increments when firing at closer targets. The unused increments are disposed of by analyzing burning in a powder pit at a safe distance from the guns. Above a certain size, semi-fixed rounds are impracticable. The weight of the whole assembly is too much to be carried effectively. In this case separate loading ammunition is used. The projectile and propelling charge are supplied and loaded separately. The projectile is rammed home in the chamber. The powder charge are loaded. Then the breech is closed and the primer is inserted into the primer holder on the back of the breech. Separate loading ammunition is typically used on 155mm and larger howitzers. Several propellant types are available for 155mm howitzer. All normal projectiles arrive at the weapon with a plug in the fuse well on the nose of the projectile. Using a special fuse wrench, the plug is unscrewed and a fuse is screwed in. The decision as to which type of fuse to use is made by the fire direction center and carried out by the gun crew. The armaments fitted to early tanks were contemporary field or naval artillery pieces and used the same ammunition. When tank versus tank combat became more important, and specific tank guns did not exist, it became common to adapt anti-aircraft guns which fired shells of high velocity, which were needed for high-altitude targets. As the armor applied to tanks increased, ammunition for tank use paralleled that of anti-tank guns. Current tank gun ammunition is a single fixed round for quick loading. The propellant is in a combustible case, thus negating empty shell casings. The primary anti-armor warhead is the sabot round, a shaped charge or sensor-fused warhead. The tank made horse cavalry obsolete, and while an infantryman could deal with a horse-mounted enemy, New weapons were needed to defeat a tank or other armored fighting vehicle. The first anti-tank weapons given to the infantrymen were based upon small arms, for example the anti-tank rifle, as even the later designs of tanks carried more armor. The limit of a man-portable rifle that could fire around with sufficient kinetic energy to penetrate the armor was reached. The introduction of the shaped charge warhead gave the infantrymen a weapon that used chemical energy rather than kinetic to penetrate armor in a focused manner, which made them more effective than large grenades. When propelled by a rocket, the shaped charge gained range as well. Weapons such as the U.S. Bazooka and German Panzerfaust, although bulky, were suitable for infantry use, though they were designed to be short-ranged weapons, which simplified accuracy for striking a vehicle's weak points. After World War II, the advent of the missile delivered both great range and accuracy and provided infantry with a weapon that could reliably destroy the heaviest tanks at long distances. Today's infantrymen can deploy sophisticated multispectral man-portable surface-to-air missiles equipped with the ability to reject decoys and defeat countermeasures.
Since aircraft are relatively light in weight, and delicate in construction, this, combined with their highly flammable fuel, made aircraft more susceptible to fatal damage since their first mass usage in World War I, sometimes being brought down by single bullet. When striking something vital in the airplane, the main weaknesses of ammunition provided to infantry to deal with aircraft were limited range and small warheads both due to the necessity of maintaining man-portable weapons. An example of a modern surface-to-air missile for infantry is the minus 92 Finnish marker Stinger MANPADS. Provided as an all-up round in a canister it is attached to a launcher unit and is ready to expend. Numerous other missiles in this class exist from different nations of origin. Infantry machine guns and rifles may improve their ability against aircraft by utilizing tracer ammunition to allow the aimer to better gauge the lead aim necessary to strike his target. Weapons developed primarily for anti-tank roles can add proximity fusing to increase the probability of a kill by having the warhead detonate nearby the target without having to make contact. Naval The ranges at which engagements are conducted by warships are typically much greater than that at which land warfare is observed. However, many exceptions can occur. The targets are also generally machines, not men. Naval ammunition is therefore optimized for great velocity and to disable said machines, rather than rending human flesh. Naval gun ammunition of World War II vintage came in two main varieties. Armor-piercing shells to attack hardened warships or high-explosive incendiary shells. With the demise of the armored warship, contemporary naval gun ammunition is solely the high-explosive variety. But new fuses and guidance options are available to increase lethality, especially against high-speed missile or aircraft threats.